there are YouTubers <clears throat> doing this the uh, the ICEP way. There's a group Wanderers, <clears throat> and we're meeting coming up April 14th. Alan Potkin is going to talk about his work. He's pushed the PDF format further than anyone. And uh, he's a scholar of East Asian studies. Um, I met him in Bhutan. That's where I met him when my parents were living there. But our family had known him because my dad and he both had the same professor, Dick Meyer, when they were studying planning or whatever they were studying, they had him as a professor. In the case of my dad, he did become a, a regional planner and that's why we moved around the world a bunch. So I'm starting with this little book and literally little, like I just got it and here's how little it is next to my head, you see. It's a Bantam book, they call them, or pocket books. And I've written about it, mentioned it, cited it because I'd heard that this book was sort of an inspiration for Werner Erhard's AST training, which I did become involved with. And I write about that here on Medium. I have a, a zoomed out view of my desktop and I scroll down and finally get around to reading this book, which here I am almost 64 and I haven't read this book. Well, it's small and obscure, you could say, and not assigned reading. And while I can give some excuses. In any case, um, he means electronic social transformation. Stevens, the author, and it's McLuhan-esque. I use that word. He's giving a diagnosis as to why there's such huge conflict. And what is this anti-war sentiment, which was shocking to a lot of people who thought it was you know, aren't we all supposed to grow up in defense of our homeland or whatever? This idea that you would somehow try to shirk that responsibility, you know, but it was given a diagnosis here in this book as really um, a sensitivity about the whole planet. It's not that you're disconnecting from humans and trying to um, space out in a way that disconnects you from society. It's just you're operating more for all the people, literally. I mean, it just comes naturally at the level of, let's say, telepathy. And you say, well, we don't have telepathy. And I'm saying, yeah, but we have television. And let's just say television's telepathy. And now we have smartphones and stuff like that. And I don't think it got to be quite the H.G. Wells scenario expressed in this book of the neo-primitives who lost all linear skills versus the linears with the S people in between, yes and no. It's just that the linear side also got a boost in that we have the command line. In the beginning was the command line I mentioned somewhere. And that extends the linear skills into oh, I don't know, the world of computers, let's call it. Computation continues to be a lexical and not just visual thing. But then with like works by Tufty and so on, holding up more classics, um, you're going to have that bridge between, you know, number crunching and right brain kind of visualization. Right, if you're willing to use that lingo of left and right brain, regardless of your beliefs about brains, you can still use it as a lingo. And I'm not as saying I'm all that skeptical about everything brain. That's like, it's another discussion. So another piece of news, and I feel this is a high watermark for me. So I should be tooting my own horn when I have a chance. Otherwise people will say, what? Why didn't you take advantage when you had it and so on? There's always critics. I was just holding up the Bucky Fuller uh, Synergetics first volume because here at the BFI, there's been a saga of migrating the whole website out of Drupal and into WordPress. Both are basically open source projects written in PHP and both have a big following. In any case, moving content from one framework to another, it sounds maybe easier than it is. And it's really an occasion for new content. It's like in so much as possible, let's just <clears throat> beef up this site with new stuff. 
so there's because it's hard to just you know literally if you copy all the old text then you're also going to have to copy the structure and this whole move to wordpress is also a chance to alter the structure somewhat get the big ideas that's what the focus here is and synergetics is one of those big ideas but the high water point I'm talking about is this opening verbiage about what is synergetics, literally in terms of books, authors, publishers, dates and times, and then a little bit about the philosophy. <clears throat> so I don't neglect, you know, what is it about and where to file it? Let's call it philosophy. And I cite Earl in college, Dr. Peter Suber. We had a long conversation about whether it's philosophy or not. And I know that's obscure, but that's the thing, I get, to, I get to have my say for a few minutes at least, my 15 minutes. So if you click on this link to Kirby's page on Synergetics, we're not even talking about my Synergetics on the web, which is a site I threw together almost as soon as people were throwing together websites. And, I'm, and then on that basis, I was also the first webmaster of the Buckminster Fuller volunteer job with Kiyoshi Kiramiya, who grabbed the bfi.org domain name. So we worked together on that. We got the website going, you could say, and then I faded back. And now it's in full circle and away. You've got one click access to my GitHub where I have my more, more, more recent writing on Synergetics, right? This link I've got to fix, but c60.com is what they're playing with in this picture at Reed College. It all connects lattices. So you know, you know this material fairly well by now if you've listened to my channel a long time. Otherwise, I'm scrolling too quickly and you're like, what am I supposed to read this or what? But there are pictures and words packed together in what's called a Jupyter Notebook. And Jupyter Notebooks have actual active code cells in them, meaning Python or Julia or some language are could be in the code cell. And when you run the code, it runs the cell. And here you just see it like in museum mode behind glass, cells all run. But way at the top of this, if you click on uh, run on Google Colab, it should pop us up inside of an interactive environment where we can go to those same code cells and actually run them and actually change the code and so forth. It won't impact the original. So we're not in danger of destroying anything. You just come in here and play around, read the same text. But when you get to a cell, such as here, you can click the little arrow, see if it works. It's still loading down here, it says. So you get the idea. It's OK, right? This is the standard. Okay, I just ran that and defined those two functions and now run this. This is a sequence, 112.42.92. You can find it in the online encyclopedia of integer sequences. All interesting stuff, I'm sure. It's very academic. And in that sense, that's where I'm back in my home context of teaching bright kids interested in winning computer events like this, computing Olympiads, other things like that, ACSL, American Society of Com American, the, the L is for League, American, let's go there. Because this is what behind the scenes, I am also showing how what I just showed you can be a standard part of any algorithms and data structures class if you want it to be. You're trying to hold on to the geometric right brainy stuff, but also build a table. So it's very lexical, linear. It's very, you know, rows and columns is the most ancient tabulation of data, right? It's, it's all what we're doing all over again, but we're doing electronically at a industrial scale so that, you know, your tables, you can work with millions and billions of records if you want quickly, not just, you know, old days means quill pen, writing out the ledger and stuff. So this is a standard algorithms and data science class with our data structures class with a special emphasis on these contests. 
And so it's pretty, it's pretty elite school. And what I'm trying to show here is how it is a no brainer and already accepted practice in the Silicon forest. If you want to do some of the same stuff that I'm showing you in, um, in the BFI world, right? I mean, I'm not teaching pandas and NumPy just so we can learn about Bucky Fuller's geometry. But I think in terms of a history of American philosophy, you would do well to take advantage of what's at the BFI website, a link to all this history, right? Your history if you're a boomer, right? And, and before, because synergetics actually comes out of more of the bohemian generation like the beatniks were before the hippies, right? So you've got Wavy Gravy kind of endorsing this book on the back, but he's from the hippie generation. And Bucky Fuller, whom the book quotes, and it says he's an S person, um, you know, and again, this is pre, pre S training, this is the important thing. Uh, he's identified Bucky is as an S person. And what does that mean? And I'm saying it's that bridge between left and right brain in a way. I mean, that's not the schedule. That's not the schedule. That's not the vocabulary that the author's using. But it is McLuhan-esque, and it is in terms of linear versus nonlinear. And the point about synergetics, I think, is that it tries to bring those two together. It's very linear, nonlinear itself and is about the structure of thinking, you could say, linear, nonlinear, what does that even mean, right? So it's all one big ballpark, so I'm trying to say. So join us uh, if you uh, are a wanderer and want to lurk in on my talk with Alan Potkin next April 14th on a Thursday, it should be at seven. I have sent invites out on the wanderers list and um, we'll see you next time. <laughs>